Car's not fast. Sounds nice. But it's not fast. It's been weeks since I decided I need to get a timing light so I could time my car and see what was going on. And today's the day that I've finally gone and got the timing light. And it's time to see what I can discover. Here's my timing light. It's the most poverty one I could find from Super Cheap Autos. $80. Alright, so there's evidence of mechanical advance. I run the revs up and you can definitely see the uh, timing marks moving as the distributor advances the distributor curve. But, seeing as how this is a poverty timing light and there really aren't much markings to go by on the harmonic balancer, I'm going to have to do a bit more homework so I can figure out what the timing actually is and what it needs to be. I've been on the YouTubes and had a look at how to figure out your timing and there's a way for me to put some timing marks on my harmonic balancer. But the first thing I need to do is work out what the circumference of the harmonic balancer is and that's going to require a little bit of maths. Right, so this is a 152 millimetres. So 152 millimeters diameter times pi equals 477 millimeters worth of circumference. So if I divide that by 10, that'll give me how many millimeters it is for 36 degrees of timing. And all I need to do is transfer that onto this. And I will have my timing marks. T, D, C. 18 degrees. 36 degrees. 9 degrees. 7 degrees. And that should give me my timing marks. Alright, I've got my timing tape on my harmonic balancer. And there are a couple of yellow dots on here around the 36 degree mark as it is, so it might actually be timed in according to that uh, timing mark on there to 36 degrees or thereabouts. Okay, so it does appear to have enough timing in it to make it go pretty well. The next thing I need to address is the amount of piston dwell and whether that harmonic balancer has rotated a few degrees either way because of its age. Alright, off camera I got my wife to give me a hand so I could figure out the piston dwell and that's the top dead center mark on one side of the piston dwell and that's the other mark for the piston dwell as the piston started to move again. So somewhere in the middle here is my actual top dead center. And as you can see, that's the original timing mark there. And this one here is my estimation of where top dead center actually is. So I put a little yellow dot on the harmonic balancer there, which should be theoretically my new top dead center. So I'll move my piece of timing tape around and I'll time it in for 34 degrees based on this top dead center and I'll see how I go. Okay, I have my timing tape on my harmonic balancer to represent the new timing mark and the new top dead center based on my estimates. 
So it's looking a lot like there's 9 degrees worth of timing on the table that I can add in. That's pretty exciting. 9 degrees is a lot of timing. I'm just going to add a tiny reference mark to the top of the distributor before I start moving stuff around. Just in case I have to restore it all back to where I found it. There we go. Let's see if I can get this distributor to rotate. The last Falcon I had with a 351 in it, the distributor was rusted into the uh, block and I couldn't move it. Alright, come on done alright. As easy as. some spice. may not look like it, but it's actually trying to rain today. Should I take the car out? adjust my shifter because the cable must be binding a little bit because it's not letting me use my gears as effective as I'd like so I need to pull this apart and figure out what I'm doing wrong